You're walking along the street, you're at a party, or else you're alone, and then you suddenly dig. You're looking in someone's eyes, you suddenly realize that this could be the start of something. Hello, and welcome to today's book talk. We're going to be talking about books that have changed my life, and hopefully, if you decide to read them, they will also change yours. We'll be talking about four books. The first one will be I Am the Messenger by Marcus Susak. The second one is kind of a funny story by Ned Vizzini. The Story of a Girl by Sarah Zar, and The Absolutely tr part True Diary of a Part-Time Indian by Sherman Alexi. Um, to start with, I Am the Messenger by Marcus Zusak. You may have noticed that my last book talk also featured a book by Marcus Zusak. Marcus Zusak is one of my favorite writers, um, just because of his writing style. Everything is perfect and beautiful and wonderful, and it makes it a delight to read. Uh, but this book, I Am the Messenger, is about this uh, boy. He's 19 years old. He's an illegal taxi cab driver. Um, his mom hates him, he's got a weird relationship with his brother, anyway, but he somehow stops a bank robbery from happening, and at the trial, the bank robber looks at him and says, you're a dead man, meaning the boy is dead now, like, he's not doing anything, he's not special, he's not unique. He's not doing anything interesting with his life, and he could be doing so much more. And he gets thrown into this whole thing where he receives these playing cards in the mail that have addresses on them, and then they lead to new clues, and they lead to other things, and it all leads to people that he needs to help, that he needs to help them figure out their lives and help solve their problems and make their, their lives better and in that find his own meaning and find that he is special and that he does count and that he's not a dead man. He's very much alive. And this book really helps you understand your own role in society and how you do matter and you are changing people's lives and you're doing it in ways that you never even imagined. And so to give you a taste of this book, here is a quote from I Am The Messenger. You can kill a man with those words. No gun, no bullets, just words and a girl. Anyway, but moving on to It's Kind of a Funny Story by Ned Vanzini. This book has been made into a movie, uh, but the book, of course, is so much better. It's about this depressed teenager in New York City, and the moment when he decides... He's going to commit suicide by jumping off the Brooklyn Bridge and then kind of chickens out and admits himself to a mental institution where he ends up staying on the adult floor and not on the young adult floor because the young adult floor is under renovations. And finding out exactly how normal he is and how he's not strange and how he's going to be okay. And I think... That book, it's, it's great for anyone because I think somewhere in our life, or we're, we're going to know someone, or we ourselves will go through it, we, we will be depressed. And this book is so realistic in its explanation of the disease. Um, and it's, it's really great. It's funny. It's laugh out loud funny. And it's just kind of like the strangeness of your own life if you were in a mental institution, but the, that you are going to be okay and that you are normal. You're not a freak and you do fit in. And I think that's, that's really important for people to know that you're, you're not alone. You're, you're going to be okay. But to give you a, a, another taste, um, the absolute worst part of being depressed is the food. A person's relationship with food is one of their most important relationships. I don't think your relationship with your parents is that important. Some people never know their parents. I don't think your relationship with your friends are important, but your relationship with air, that's key. You can't break up with air. You're kind of stuck together. Only slightly less crucial is water. And then food. You can't be dropping food to hang with someone else. You need to strike up an agreement with it. 
again, it's just kind of funny in the way that it's phrased and that sort of thing, but you should definitely check out this book. The third book today is The Story of a Girl by Sarah Zar. This book is sadder, more serious. Um, I mean, the other two books are serious, definitely serious, but this one has a much more serious tone for this girl. She's a teenager, and her dad caught her having sex when she was 13 with the, her brother's friend in the back of a truck, and just kind of dealing with the after effects of this, of her dad thinks she's horrible, and the school thinks she's a slut, and she just wants to get out of this poor little town, and she wants to leave it all behind her, which, well, we may not all have been raped, but it was, it's statutory rape. Um, I think we can relate to a lot of her struggle of there's this this boy and we can't, you don't want to forgive him, but then you do. And it's really a tale about finding, finding yourself and getting through these awful things, even though it's really awful and getting through it doesn't mean that it's bright sunshines and rainbows on the other side. It's, it's still going to be hard, but learning to forgive and... Stand up for yourself. I think it's definitely part of this book. And I think that's that's important for anybody at all. Um, so to give you a quote from Story of a Girl. It came down to the smallest things, really, that a person could do to say, I'm sorry, to say it's okay, to say, I forgive you. The tiniest declarations that built one on top of the other until there was something solid beneath your feet and then, and then, who knew? <laughs> so I think we can all kind of relate to that. But, um, and then the fourth book today, which is The Absolutely True Diary of a Part-Time Indian by Sherman Alexie. And this book is amazing. Laugh out loud funny about this young Indian boy who decides to go to school, to go to, I think it's high school, um, on the white side of town off the res, and how the Indians then reject him, say he's a white lover and he's left them all behind and that's horrible, and how the white people reject him because he's a Native American and therefore his parents are drunks and he's horrible and he's just gonna be a no good, <laughs> bad influence sort of thing. Um, and then finding he finds himself, and he finds his own little niche in both spots, even though they're at odds with each other, they're at war. But he shows, no, we can belong in both. And it's it's very hopeful. Um, it's so funny, but then there are parts of it where... And you can relate to his story, and then, then there are just parts that are horribly tragic, and you're just like, ugh. Oh. And living next to a reservation, you know, I, I know that... Most of what he goes through is just everyday stuff for these these Indian kids, and it's it opens your eyes, and you look at them differently, and you say, I think I understand you better now, I, where I might have been judgmental without knowing it because of the people around me, but now, now, no, I think, I think we can make a place for you, and I think that's... It's good. It's it's an eye opener where it, it definitely changes your perspective and the way that you treat other people, um, or maybe not the way you treat them, but the way you think about them. Because hopefully you treat everything equally and well, uh, whether or not you think it or not. But what I really love about this kid is that he is a book lover, and so here is a wonderful quote from Sherman Alexie's book: "I grabbed my book and opened it up. I wanted to smell it. Heck, I wanted to kiss it. Yes." kiss it. That's right. I am a book kisser. And maybe that's kind of perverted, or maybe it's just romantic and highly intelligent. Anyway, so I'll leave you guys with that today. You should go check them out. And here's to life-changing books.